the Expats Club is a non-profit social organization and our speakers are all volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker. The speaker is here today purely for your entertainment, enjoyment and education. Today's speaker is David Kavanagh, a former DJ, but today he will be telling us how to protect your reputation online. David has over 30 years of experience in sales, marketing and coaching, both online and offline in 17 countries for himself and his clients. David currently makes his home in Patia on the dark side. Please give him a warm PCEC welcome. Okay, good morning ladies and gentlemen. There's not many ladies, but good morning ladies. Morning. Good morning gentlemen. Morning. Okay, my name's David Cameron. I've toured the world since 2004 teaching people how to make money on the internet. But Ren asked me if I mind talking today about online reputation. Hands up if you don't mind if you've heard about reputation management before. Good? Some, a few. Hands up if you've heard of reputation marketing before. No? Okay. I'll tell you what it is. Please watch my slides up here. I put on here, if you have a look, are you safe online? Now, just before you start, most speakers always say how good they are and where they've been and all this stuff. I just want to show you a 30-second video, if you can press play on the next one for me. in Dubai, I've spoken on Burj Al Arab, I've spoken basically in about 17 different countries. Um, I'm known as one of the best internet marketing coaches in the world, but I'm here today to teach you about you. So if you don't mind, can you grab a pen and paper, because I've got a lot of information you can write down that will really truly help you. So if you haven't got a pen and paper, can you grab some now? Because today isn't about me, today's about you and me helping you. So even if you've got a phone that's on silent, you want to put it in your notes, etc. Okay, cool. All right, please have a look at this screen. For a copy of my presentation today, I've done a nice thing for you. If you go to reputationmarketingservice.com, um, I'll give you a free copy of my slides, and I'll also give a copy to Judith and Ren, so if you want, you can get it off the club. That's with um, my compliments, free of charge. Okay, so just go to reputationmarketingservice.com, and I'll give that to you. Now, Reputation marketing, a lot of people when I speak on this subject, they don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Now let's be honest for a second, hands up if you don't have a clue what reputation marketing is. Just put your hands high. Okay, hands if you do know. And hands up if you wouldn't put your hand up no matter what I said. Is that because you'd stand out? But I'll ask you a question, weren't you meant to stand out when you were born? So today, I'll give you a little bit more if you give me a bit more. Is that fair? Just say yes or I know you're alive. Yeah, that's okay, good. All right, reputation marketing. Have a look at this. Imagine looking at the front page, boom, front page of a newspaper today. Imagine looking at the front page of Paddy and Mail, Paddy and People, whatever. One of the Bangkok papers. Imagine looking at that and someone has printed a negative article about you on the front page. How would you feel? Just give me a bit of feedback. How would you feel? All publicity is good. Is that what you think? No, no, no. Thank you for the joke. Don't burn down the 
Yeah, okay, well, I won't repeat that because the video would have been anyway. So someone's printed a negative article about you. Now, saying, do not trust this person, gentleman, lady, whoever, ever. Now think about it for a minute, you might think it had never happened to me. Really? It even happened to me by an English reporter who's no longer in Thailand. Some of you might know him, but I won't mention his name. And it was totally false. But the thing is, when stuff happens, who agrees that when people read it, they don't know if it's a yes or no, right or wrong, so they still get, their brain starts ticking over. Hands up if you understand where I'm coming from there. And so they have to meet the person in person to realise if they're right, wrong or indifferent. So, imagine this article in the newspaper never ever gets removed. I'll ask you just to join in with me. How would you feel then? Sue them. Sue them? Try to get it out of Google. Try to get out of Google. You can sue them as much as you want, but try to get it out of Google. Try to get it out of a rip-off report. Try to get your name off complaints board. Who understands where I'm coming from there? You might sue them, you might win, but it might still remain on the internet. Because when something goes live on the internet, hands up if you understand, it might go live on one site, but then someone else copies and pastes it to many other sites. Hands up if you understand what I'm saying there. So they might sue a company, and then guess what happens? It's on something else. What are you going to go running around suing a million people? Now, a million's exaggeration, but who understands where I'm coming from then? Excuse my friends, but you're in the shit. Okay, so, well, that's the internet and search engines nowadays. That's really what it's like. Now, and that's your online reputation that they're destroying. Now, you might say to me, yeah, but David Kavner, I'm just Mr. Jones from down the road. Who the heck would want to start suing me? Or who would put something bad about me? Well, who on earth would want to do this to you? Hands up if you understand who might do it to you. Who do you think? Just yell out a couple of things to me. Ex-girlfriend. Ex-girlfriend? <laughs> Sorry, sir? Competition. Oh, competition? Definitely, yes. Yes. Yeah, all those things. An angry ex-employee that you've sacked, and it could have been you sacked for a warranted reason. What about an ex-spouse? And I'm not saying who's right or wrong. And what about a jealous competitor? Maybe the competitor is right. Maybe I have an argument with Judith. Now, I don't argue with ladies, because as we know, ladies are always right. I'll just shut up there, full stop. <laughs> no, but the thing is, that competitor could be right. They could be wrong, but then later on, you might even make up with them. They could be best buddies and do a joint venture. But the stuff is still in Google, in Yahoo. Who understands how des detrimental it is to your business and your name? Okay, I'll ask you a question. Please give me feedback. How much would a normal hamburger cost in Patia? This is the part where, where I leave it into the sentence, that's where you fill in the blanks, right? 200 bucks. 200 bucks. If you had it in a restaurant on a nice plate, what would it cost you? 500 bucks. 500 bucks. But if you're in the middle of this sun, could never get back to Patia, and you're about to kind of cark it, how much would you pay for it? 30 bucks. You get, <laughs> 30 bucks, he says he wants to cark it. You get my point. What I'm saying to you is people pay big, big money when they're listing Google for the wrong things. Who understands where I'm coming from here? They'll pay anything to get on off. Now, here's what I say to you here. You and your business need to, protect, to be protected online. Hands up if you agree with me there. You need. Now, if your hands down, I'll ask you why. Who agrees you and your business need to be protected online? Do you want me to say it in German or French? Yeah. Judith, they're not awake. Can you give them all a coffee again? <laughs> Ring that bell for them, Judith, will you? Okay, now, here's what I say to you. Hands up if you agree that you need to be in control of your own online reputation. Yeah? Okay, so what I say to you, people have heard the term reputation management. You know what the word, and I call it reputation marketing, and I'll tell you the difference. Reputation management kicks in when someone's got some bad content online written about them. Hands up if you understand what I'm saying there.
that reputation marketing should start when you first start building your online presence. Hands up if you understand what I'm saying there. So then you start promoting yourself with all your good clients, your good testimonials, your good feedback, your positive reviews. And so if anyone writes anything bad, it already goes in with 100 million good things. Now, please have a look at the screen. Because nowadays, we're all being Googled by everyone we meet. Who agrees you've gone and seen someone, you might have seen a concert or anything, and you still go and Google it? Hands up if you've ever done that. You might be buying a product. You could be buying a service. You could be meeting up with the CEO of a company and want to know how to talk to him or her. And what do you do? You Google it. You might even be sitting there now Googling me. And that's okay, I don't mind. I've only got one negative thing by a person who didn't even do one of my courses and said I charge her $8,000. My top of the range course is only 2997, so I don't even know who the heck wrote it. But I tell people up front, because guess what? They have come across it, I've already told them. Who agrees with that? Just tell people, lay your cards on the table when you first start. So okay, next thing. If you deserve a bad reputation, then I hope you get what you deserve. Who agrees with that? If you've got a bad reputation, you do negative things, you rip people off, I hope you get what you deserve, I really do. But, imagine for a moment, you're a good person. Imagine you don't do things wrong. And let's face it, we all do something wrong. We're a human. But, if you've got a good business, you're a nice person, you're doing something overseas or in Patria or wherever for that matter, why should you cop bad publicity? Do you agree you should or you shouldn't if you're a nice person? Shouldn't? Okay. Now you need, please write these things down. Here's, what I, here's where I want you to start writing. You need to know any negative links about you or your company. You need to know if there's any negative reviews, any articles written about you. Any videos in YouTube, etc. Who understands what I'm saying here? Just raise your hand so I understand. Okay, cool. So, links, reviews, articles, videos, and I'll go further to say to you, even if someone's written something nice about you, comment on that so there's still a two-way street. You get what I'm saying? Okay, cool. Next one. You need to know your strategy for fast improvement if people have written some negative stuff that's not warranted against your name. Now, so here are some tips to help your reputation. Now, the first thing I'll ask you, how many people here today, or if you'd like to raise your hand, have actually got a website online, please? Just raise your hand. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, no, okay, we've got about eight, okay. And for anyone else starting a website, because I can show you to make money on the internet very, very easily. So if anyone who wants to, talk to me later on by all means. But if you do start a business, do it from scratch and do it properly the way I'm telling you today. So here's the thing. Your online reputation starts when you start building your online presence. That's when it starts, not after the fact. We've all heard the old saying in Australia or England or America, when should you install a burglar alarm system in a security system in your house? Before or after the fact? Yes? Who's heard that before? Just not so I know you're alive, okay? Okay, I heard more noise at my grandmother's funeral. Okay, so here's the thing. Your potential clients and customers are reading every review before buying about you. Before Ren asked me to speak here at the Patia City Expats Club, I did my research on the Patia City Expats Club. Now, who agrees? If you were me, you would have as well. Yes or no? Because I look from the point of view, I choose where I'd like to speak. And I'm no better than you, definitely not. I'm no better than you, I'm just me. But if you're in my position, you were offered speaking engagements, etc. would you pick and choose where you'd like to stand or who you'd like to be associated with? Okay, have I made bad decisions in the past? Yes, in Empathia, particularly with a couple of people, but you can never change that. Okay, and sometimes you don't know the people that you're dealing with and they come across all nice and rosy, then after the fact you find out that the rose doesn't smell as beautiful as the rose kind of looks. 
who, who can relate to that kind of thing, right? Yeah, so we won't mention any names, but anyway, we'll move forward. Okay, now, so here's what you need to do from scratch. Please take some notes. One, build your online presence properly when you start. If you need a hand with that, free of charge. I'm not asking you for your money. Give us a buzz. I live in Patria. I've been here 15 years with my beautiful wife, Nisarat, and my children. So give us a buzz. I'm more than happy to help you. When I'm not in the country, because I'm speaking a couple of weeks in Japan, and I'm speaking in Italy, and that's a bloody hard life for touring around speaking, but Nisarat will handle the calls, and that means she'll make a booking for you. Now, build your online presence. Second thing, once you've built your online presence, you need to market your online reputation. Anyone who's got websites already, go to your current customers and your clients and ask them, in order to help you and serve you better, what are the kind of things myself and my company do that actually really impress you? Do you mind if I use that on my website? Do you mind if we put that on a video? Who understands where I'm coming from? And use those so your reputation does show proper, truthful reviews, etc. Now, next one. Promote your online and offline business identity. Promote any way you can. Next one. Here is how to market and manage your business. First of all, request some reviews from your happy clients when they experience that moment with you. How many of you beautiful ladies here have been to a restaurant and you think, oh my God, that was, but then the other one was, oh my gosh, that was great. And at the time, do you think you would under, well, what we were just talking about years before in regards to a restaurant in particular, who agrees at the time, if you did experience good service, great support, beautiful whatever, you would give a testimony or a review there and then, a five star or four star, who agrees you do that there and then? But after the fact, a year later, you think, where did I go again? So capture them in the moment. So if you've got an online website, now ask for reviews, ask them for feedback. And here's the thing, if they give you negative feedback, jump on it, improve it, fix it up so you can both move forward. Who thinks that's a smart idea? Don't let it linger. Because otherwise, you do something good, they never talk about it. You do something that might be a little bit shady, guess what happens? Everyone knows about it. What happens in Patia stays on Facebook. Next one, respond to positive and negative reviews in a timely manner. I see people saying, what do you think of this? And what do you think of this restaurant in Patia? What do you think of this hotel? And what do you think of David Cameron? What do you think of Judith? What do you think of blah, 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 blah? And they write something, and you can tell it's been written by a PA or a VA, a virtual assistant, because they don't even respond for weeks. Who agrees if you get to post something, respond to it, or pay someone to respond on your behalf? Do you agree with that? Okay, cool. Next thing. Start marketing yourself on the following sites. Now, if you want to, as I said, if you go to one of my websites, reputationmarketingservice.com, you can, you've got all these slides. But otherwise, talk to Judith, I'll give her a copy, or you can take a photo if you've got this now. Google Sites is a brilliant one to get to the top of the search engine straight away. Because guess who owns Google Sites? Judith, they're getting hard, maybe. <laughs> guess who owns Google Sites? Google. Blogger, blogspot.com, blogger.com is owned by Google. So would you agree with me that if you advertise and you want to get to the top of Google, maybe you should start using some of their own properties first. So Google Sites, just go to sites.google.com. Blogger is owned by Google. Then there's WordPress. Hands up if you've heard of WordPress before. 23% of the worldwide websites are made with a software, let's put it this way, software called WordPress. Hub pages, etc. you can see what's on the screen and all of these sites as well. Now, YouTube is also owned by Google. Now, here's the thing. Ren, who knows Ren, just so I know. Okay, Ren said to me, um, can I come and have something to eat with you and come across to my house? 
and I grabbed one of Dr. Singh. Who's met Dr. Singh before? I grabbed one of Dr. Singh's videos off YouTube. I downloaded it and I said, hey, watch how you've uploaded your video and I could re-upload your video and beat you. He said, how do you do that? And I said, I'll show him. And I did it and now I'm number one, he's number three. And yet, so what I'm saying here is how many people can grab stuff about you, repurpose it, but write negative stuff with it? Who understands again where I'm coming from there? So please, YouTube is a big one because YouTube videos also get pulled into the front page of Google because Google owns YouTube. Okay, Pinterest, LinkedIn, etc. all those ones I'm showing you on the screen. Now next one, you need to search for your name or your company name, and then the next word, scams, complaints, rip-offs, whatever, the kind of words that you think, maybe your jealous lover, ex-lover or whatever, um, might have written about you. The first thing they write is such and such complaints, such and such scam, such and such rip-off. Put your name and then that word after and check what comes up on Google. Who agrees that's actually a smart thing to do just to see if any person's written. And sometimes the person who writes about you might know Red or Judith or David. They're paid by someone else just to write negative stuff. And do you think that's right or wrong? It's totally wrong, you know, but they're getting paid. So I look at it and I'm thinking, I wouldn't do it, but I look from the point of view. Here's the thing. So write down the phrases that you find yourself being targeted with. Talk to me later and I'll show you hopefully how to push them down the rankings. But here's the thing. I will not support people who I know up front, they've got a negative, bad, truly bad reputation. I have supported a couple of people before with websites and stuff like that, and six months down the track found out that they're all a lot of rubbish to me, and they've given me a whole stack of stuff, and I've supported them, and then I found out they've conned me as well. How many people have ever had that has happened to you as well? So I think to myself, if I knowingly know the person is bad, or they've had a bad reputation, I'll tell you now, never deal with them. Okay, next one. Here's what I say to you. Look at the words that are written successfully about Padma City Experts Club. Look at the ones that might not me or you or whoever. Look at those phrases and then retarget them and put them back online, but in a positive mindset, in a positive frame. Or answer the video that's negative about you, answer the articles that are negative about you, and actually give a proper side of the story without being rude or offensive or swearing. Who thinks that's good if you're actually sticking up for yourself and giving your point of view to the story? Okay, insert as many of your positive reviews and testimonials as you can. Now, if I was to go and put something about Patia City Expats Club with David Cameron speaking on such and such date, I could be number one within about two minutes, okay? I could be number one in Google in a couple of minutes, so I'll, I'll do it when I get home with the video or something like that just to show you that. But the thing is, you have to also be able to do it with your company, okay? People have said to me in Thailand, for example, if you've got like a law office in Thailand, one of my main clients is Chantima, who at the back of Tucom, when you walk out the back of Tucom, you look to the right, you'll see DMC Interlaw. Anyone ever seen Chantima's office before? Okay, all right, Chantima was one of my first clients I helped here, and she said to me, I want a website, dmcinterlaw.co.th. And I said, Chantima, with all due respect, you know law, I know internet. So without being disrespectful and losing face in that, you stick to your stuff, I'll stick to mine, and tell me your opinion of what I'm about to say to you. When people get home like David to Australia, or my partner Roger who lives in the UK, he's not going to search for DMC Inter Law. Who agrees with that? But he will search for getting a divorce in Patna, buying a property in John Pitian. Who, who understands where I'm coming from there? I said so. And I said, even in short, they will, set, they will search for Patia lawyers, Patia attorneys, Patia solicitors. So get one of those with a .com on the end, not a .co.th. Why do you think I recommended to her to get a .com? Why do you think? Give me a little bit of feedback. Instead of a .co.th. 
covers the world, yeah, and and her customers, should I say clients, are 99, well, I'd say they're 90% expats. DMC, I said, what's DMC? She said, oh, that's that show with um, the Buddhist channel in Bangkok. I said, David Cabinet doesn't know that when he gets back to Australia, or Roger doesn't know that when he gets back to Heathrow. Okay, so I said, and here's what I'd say, if you start to get business in Patia, get, is anyone starting a business here? Just so I know. Just get patiawhatever.com. I even said to Ren, no disrespect intended, PC, PCEC.club might sound sexy, but no one searches for it, but they will search for patiacityexpatsclub.com. Okay? Who agrees in that regard? I'm not saying what's right or wrong, but who agrees what you search for? Okay, so next thing. Google owns Blogger, YouTube, Google Plus, as well as Google Maps. And you might think, well, David, why are you talking about Google Maps? Well, okay. And I use Judith's name because I met Judith and she's one of the only ones I know here, so I'll use Judith <laughs> and Ren. So if I wanted to look at something online, if Judith had a business, have you got a business here, Judith? No. no. If Judith had Judith's accountant's business in Patria, whatever, Judith's legal service one. I'd still put Patia Legal Service with Judith.com or something like that and I would list it with Google Maps because if you ever go and search something on Google and you press enter, please just give me a bit of feedback. You'll see all the links you can click on the left, yes? They're called organic listings. On the right, they're AdWords. People are paid to be in that position. But if you verify your address with Google, Pat to your, you know, pat your accounts with Judith.com, you will now, when people search for it, be in the top three of the maps section and you don't have to pay for it and you're there forever. So who thinks that's handy? Because most people nowadays are searching on an iPad, a Samsung, a Huawei, Oppo, whatever, in their car, etc. So Google Maps will show up there, and by the time you get home, they already know where you live, they know all about you, they've done all their research. Who's getting what I'm saying here? Yes or no? Good. Thank you, sir. Next one. People say to me, David, search, uh, search engine optimization. You optimize all your pages and your websites for the search engine. Social media, pay per click. Do you think Google, Yahoo, Bing, etc., are that stupid? to know that we are going to probably do that? Of course, if I know someone's going to target your name complaints, your name rip off, your name scams, whatever, no pointing intended, gentlemen, but of course, what would I do? I'd register David Cabinet Complaints. David Cabinet Compla Complaints is all about David Cabinet touring the world, teaching people, giving so much homework to his students, he gets complaints every single day. Who understands where I'm coming from? Reverse it around and put it into a positive. But again, if you find people you're supporting that are negative, don't support them. Just wipe them off because I don't want to deal with people that aren't. Okay, next thing. You need to get new reviews online. You need to get new feedback online. And there's one thing I'll tell Judith and Ren too. If you go to Google Alerts, Google Alerts, A-L-E-R-T-S. You can write in, for example, Patia City Expats Club, press enter, and every single time there is a new page from anywhere entered into the Google database about referencing Patia City Expats Club, you will get an email telling you of that. Who thinks that's good to know exactly when things are getting in Google about yourself or your business? Yeah, very much so. So, track those kind of things and you can build listings. Now, the next thing I'll show you here. I always say to my clients, no matter who they are, create a five-star reputation and market your products and services with integrity and honesty. <coughs> Excuse my friends, but don't bullshit people. Tell them straight as it is. Whether they agree or disagree, that's cool, but be honest with them. Who agrees with that? Just be straightforward, tell them the truth. Now, will you ever make mistakes online? Will you ever stuff up in your offline business? Yes, again, admit that online. 
before someone else does. That's why I said to you, I've represented people, I've not represented, but helped people before, and months down the track I found out they've scammed me. And I look from the point of view, one gentleman, I won't mention the name, took it all the way to Patia to do a training course for 10 days with me. And later on, he's from England, and he used to be a, anyone from England here? He was a chauffeur and he used to be a DJ with Jimmy Savile. Okay? He came to my training course. So next minute I'm in Australia and I get a phone call, did you know what? I can mention his name, Ray Terrett. And the thing is, I get a phone call from a gentleman, did you know you're on the front page online of some blogger's website in Bangkok? That you're associated with Ray Terrett. And he's a pedophile and he's now been convicted 25 years in jail. Now I'll ask you a question. What did I have to do with that? Who agrees I shouldn't have been involved with that? And I wrote on this gentleman's website, why are you involving me? But he went to your event. I said, well, you didn't put the captain to the aircraft that he came over here. You didn't put where he stayed at. You didn't put the hostess who kind of served him brekkie every morning. He said, oh, but you're worrying about nothing. <coughs> if you were me, do you think I was worrying about nothing? Or you would have been a little bit kind of, um, yeah, that's, that would. And Judith, if you were me in that regard, how would you feel? Yeah, that's it. She said pissed off. So if the lady runs and says pissed off, I'm allowed to say that. I was pissed off. And I wrote on this guy's, can I say the guy or I can't? Yeah, Andrew Drummond. But I wrote back to him, what has it got to do with me? Do I do a criminal check on every single person that asked me to build a website? Or teach them internet marketing? Who agrees? I don't need to do a criminal check when someone asks me just to help with a website. <coughs> and yet I'm on the front page of Google, David Kovner involved with, whew, so it's not until something like that happens that you go, oh shit, why am I copping in? And if you were me, would you agree you'd be really, really pissed off on that day or not? Yes or no? Yeah, yes. When I got that call, I'm thinking, what the hell? What have I done? I help people ethically. And another, another comment someone put, I teach reputation management. And people said to me, I had another one from him written about me before. David teaches people how to get all their bad shit off the front page of Google. I'm thinking, what? I teach people how to re do online reputation ethically, morally, and above board. And I even tell, as you know in my presentation, if people have got a bad reputation, don't even deal with them. But again, guess what reporters are going to write? Yeah? Now, I eventually got those articles down in Google. But here's what I did. I wrote replies on his posts. And guess what happened? It pushed it up Google. And so the more I commented, the more it kept going up and up and up in the search engines. When I stopped, I went to a page, went to a page 10 or 15. Who understands sometimes it's better just to leave the bloody thing alone if you know you haven't done anything wrong. Okay, next thing. You don't want to see overpriced, felt rushed, the person didn't care. Judith or David was unfriendly. You don't want to hear poor customer service. Hey, hey, watch that guy. He's walking about you now, Judith. He's right. Look at him. He's on his phone, which he told him to bloody turn off. You know what I mean? <laughs> watch him. Watch which website he's on, Judith. Okay. I even teach sales training to a lot of people. And I went into Sony in Central Festival. And the man was standing next to me. And please give me a bit of feedback here so you understand where I'm coming from. When you walk into a store and a man or lady usually walks up to you and they say, can I help you? What do we normally say? Just, just looking. So I said to him, can I teach you or have I got your permission to teach you a couple of ways to make more money for yourself than Sony? Oh yes, cup you. And I said, okay. Instead of saying, can I help you, sir? Or can I help you, mister? I said, walk up and say, I know you're just looking, 
And when you have finished looking, come and tell me what you want and I'll give you a discount. Who <laughs> thinks that's smart? A man walked up to me, he said, David, excuse me for one second. I said, yeah. He said, yes, sir, can I help you? Well, I thought, shit, that really worked well, didn't it? <laughs> Two seconds. <laughs> so it goes in here and out here. But who, who thinks that's a good kind of line to teach people in sales? I know you're looking. State the obvious. I know you're looking. And I know there's other salesmen there. You want the job. I want the job. You want the commission. You want it. And when you finish looking and you know what you want, come to me and I'll give you a discount. Of course, he's going to come back to you. Okay, next one. If you're starting a business online, use a professional domain name. I would say to you to go to Namesilo. Now, go to namesilo.com. Just write that one down, just in case you do want to start something online. A lot of people will say to you to use GoDaddy. Who's heard of GoDaddy before? Yeah, cool. And I've used them, I've got about 100 and some domains on GoDaddy. But, you buy it up front for a cheap or inexpensive price, and the next year, when the, ref uh, the renewal comes up, it's doubled or tripled. Has anyone ever experienced that before? Or suddenly you start getting all of these emails wanting to sell you something. I wonder where they might have got your email address from. GoDaddy wouldn't sell your database, of course, would they? Name Silo charge $8.99 US and you can register David Kavner or your name or yourname.com and the next year it is still the same price. And you can put up a free who is, which when people check it, they don't know your address, so you've got privacy for your wife and kids, etc. And the next year, it's exactly the same renewal fee, and you don't get spam emails. So who thinks that's a better service to get? So I'm just doing that to protect you there. So go to namesilo.com. Next thing, add a free who is protection when you're there. Because I don't know if you know, if you go and you get home to whois.com on the internet, and you type in How Do You City Expats Club or David Cannon, it shows your name, address, your phone number, everything. Now, people say if you've got nothing to hide, why do you need to put a free who is on there? I look from the point of view. I don't really work in Thailand, I don't work in Thailand, I work all over the world and I just live in Thailand. They've asked me to do a presentation here and I've done a couple for Niels Koloff, a couple of other people in that. But, I don't want people going to my house and seeing my wife and kids. Who agrees? You know what I mean? That's my business. Where I live is my business. If you want to meet with me, I'll meet with you. Let's meet at Central. I have coffee together or something. But you don't need to come to my house. I don't need to go to your house. So take the free who is because I might be away and then someone's plaguing Judas with phone calls and going to a house when she thinks my office is in Patty, not my house. Okay, so please do that. Next thing. Use a professional email address. How many people here, hands up, if you've got a Gmail, a Hotmail, or a Yahoo email address? Okay, yes? Gmail is the best out of all of them today, definitely by far, especially with the spam filters and the three folders. But I'll ask you a question, and again, I'm not here to make money today. I'm definitely not here. Not, who thinks I'm here to sell you something? Hands up if you think. Well, you're wrong, because I'm not. <laughs> Okay, I leave that to Italy or England. They've got a couple more dollars in their pocket. What I want to say to you here is, if I can show you a way to get, for example, David at davidcabner.com or Judas at judas.com and that, and it costs you nine bucks a year. That's it. No strings attached, nothing else. Who's interested to find out how to do that themselves? Hands up. Yeah, because if you want, I'll make a video, give it to Judas Wren, they can send it out to you if you've got your database, and I'll be happy to help you or you put it on your website or anything. No links to me, no money to me, just you deal direct with the companies. Do you think your whatever at gmail.com would be as good as your name at your name.com? And for nine bucks a year, if you're serious, you do it. Next thing, set up. If you want to protect your reputation, set up an online support desk for clients and customers. So then, if a client or a customer has any problems whatsoever, in my case, they go to davidcabnersupport.com. Who thinks that's pretty easy to remember? That's where they go. 
and then I can say click here if you're a customer, click here if you're a new client, click here if you're a student, and I take them to the right area, and I even live chat to them and talk to them, and I'll pick up the phone and ring them straight up and answer them. Who thinks that is good support? The only time I don't do it is on weekends, Saturday, Sunday. I do Monday to Friday, and even if they go to datacabinetsupport.com and they enter details, it'll still get directed back to my email. When I get home, sit down, have a shower, have a cup of coffee or some cup of tea, I'll answer the email. So that's another thing if you've got a business, you could do whatever, patty or legal, support.com, you know, patty city expat support or support.patty city expats, whatever. Now, be careful of what you post to Facebook and social media. Now, I rang my mother in Australia, God bless my mum, and she said to me, I'm not on bloody Facebook, son, they can spam you and viruses. Fair enough, mum. And I said, Mum, have you ever been on Facebook? No, and I never bloody want to either. Fair enough, Mum. I said, Mum, I totally respect your decision. She's like, I don't know why you, Mum, it's okay, you're, you're right. Don't argue with the women, gentlemen, you're right. You're right, Mum. And she said to me, oh, but all the stuff you put on Facebook they can use against you, guess what? Guess what? This is the part where you're supposed to say what? Thanks for asking. They can. Because the so-called reporter I told you about before went onto my Facebook, started taking photos, and they pasted it in with this stupid article they wrote. And you can't sue them, guess why? This is public domain. You've posted to Facebook. Who thinks that sucked big time, really? So, guess what I now post to Facebook? The stuff that I want them to pinch. The stuff that if they did take, it's nothing against my family, but do you, who, who understands where I'm coming from here? So, it's like the old story, don't tell John this. Guess what they're gonna do? Tell John, okay? So, post what you want people to see. Because, this beautiful lady here, this lovely lady here, you've got a private life. There's things you want people to see, sure, but there's things you, you know, you don't want people, you only want your hubby and your wife and your kids and that today. So, next thing. Set up Google Alerts, like I said to Judith before. Just go to Google, type in Google Alerts. And to monitor anything added to the Google search engine, please make sure you do that, because that will help you a lot. There's a lot of other services that if you want later on, again, I don't want your money, I don't need your money. But I look from the point of view, I'm in Patria, I live in Soy Siam, as Judith said, on the dark side, okay? So if anyone ever needs any help, just give us a buzz. I'm happy to help you because I don't work here. I mean, but I'm happy to give you some info over the phone just to help you out, push you in the right direction. Or Whoever thinks you might pick up the phone and give me a buzz one day if you need anything, just give me a buzz. Whatever you need, I'll have to be happy to help you or I'll send you to some sites, whatever. Now, next thing. Set up good quality joint ventures to show associations. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about here, Patia City Expats Club is a prime example of that. Look at the newsletter, and I don't, real, I don't think a lot of you realise what you've got with this club. Judith and Ren and the team, the committee, you know, put in so much work, and I think you take it for granted what you get. And they have to scream and whinge and moan for 400 bloody baht. Oh my God. No disrespect, but if you can't afford it, get out. Because do you know how much work people put into setting these things up, talking to hotels, organising breakfast? I run my own events. Judith, it's not easy, right? Correct. So hats off to you and the guys running it. I know how much work goes into it. It's, in, it's bloody difficult sometimes, right? So here's the thing. If you notice on your newsletter, Judith and Ren and the committee edify the speaker in question on the day which is beautiful. We all like seeing someone write something nice about us. And they also put companies that they deal with, even though they say they're not responsible for anything right, wrong, or different happens, which is public liability, of course. But at least they're setting up good quality joint ventures because then people will send people to Patty City Expats Club. So if you've got good associations and you're thinking about your reputation online and offline, who thinks with one idiot writing something bad about you, 
when Judith had ran in the committee have got 10 people saying wonderful things while they outnumber the Mr. Naughty Boy. Next thing. What I did wrong when I first started, when I had that stupid complaint, don't feed the fire. Who understands what I'm saying? Don't feed the fire under any circumstance. Because as I said, it just pushes you up. If someone says something bad about you, I'm not saying let it go. And I heard all you guys say, so, try telling a Thai lawyer, I know Kung, I know Chandler, I know all of them. Try telling them about online reputation, such and such. They go, oh, all right. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Who agrees with me there? I'm not trying to be rude. And I love Kung and I love Chandler and I love all these people. My wife and I know all of them. But I look from the point of view, it's not like an English lawyer. It's not like an Australian or American lawyer. They think and act differently to what we do. Okay? So I look from the point of view, sometimes you have to take that into your own hands. So as I said, if you've got any bad problems, I would say, when I say don't feed the fire, I'm not saying don't comment on the article or the video, but I'm saying don't start writing, oh, but you don't understand, because you know what it's doing? It's only make and then come back with something even worse. Okay, next thing. Scan. How many people here have got a Facebook account? Hands up. Got one, two, three. Oh, we've got quite a few. Okay, scan your timeline for anything objectionable. Because, gentlemen, of course you get a lady coming up, she's worked in the American Navy and she's got a chest out here and she's got a waist that's like 16 centimetres or whatever and she's worked in the Army, she's worked in the Navy and she's just met you and she wants to be your girlfriend. It's probably some guy trying to solicit all your details. But the thing is, they press like because all they see is the visual aspect of the lady in front of them. They don't think anything else. And then they start writing, hi, honey, how are you? And that. you don't know who the person is. I only add people now that I know to my Facebook. I only add people I've met at seminars and events. Next thing. Use a profile picture online on your website that sets a great first impression. My thing is, if you are using, say for example, uh, if you've got a restaurant in Patty, use the front of your shop or use standing out the front. Use Patty City Expat Club with a team standing down in front of the Holiday Inn or something. Show people you're real. That picture there is taken in Dubai in the Burj Al Arab. And I thought, well, they photoshopped me smiling, right? So I might as well use that one, it looks all right. But use a good quality image on your website and on any of your brochures, etc. Next thing, <coughs> pardon me. Show proof of people that you've helped and supported. Now, who are the people again who've got a website? Just for a second. Who's got a website? You have, sir. What kind of business have you got, sir? Uh, internet security. Sorry? Okay, cool. Not as in WordPress, as in front and mainframes, etc. or which? As in anti hacking. Okay, cool, cool. Oh, we can talk about it by all means. What's your name? Pleased to meet you, sir. Who else has got a website? Hold on, there was about four hands before, they're all run away now. Who else got a website? They all said he's gonna pick on me if I put my hand up. I'm trying to help you, so help me to help you. What I say to you here is make sure you've got good headlines. Good copywriting, the sales page. Make sure you've got good testimonials. You've got a phone number on your site. You've got a good address on there. You've got a contact form. Make sure you're above board with everyone. Now, I'll ask you a question. How many people here by a show of hands are from England, the UK, or Europe, should I say? Okay, or, okay. How many are Aussies, Australians? A couple? Good day, mate. Okay, how many people are from the USA here? Oh, a few. Wow, quite a few. Okay, cool. So it is very... Okay, I look from the point of view. What we think in maybe our neck of the woods in our country might be totally different in another country. But I'll ask the gentleman from the UK, or I'll ask the ladies or gentlemen from the USA or Australia, how many of you would like to know how to get a phone number in another country that you can put on your website so people ring you and it still comes straight through to your Thai mobile? How many of you would like to know that? Yes? Okay. Just write this down. Yes. Write this down. Skype, S-K-Y-P-E. But 
I can hear some of you saying, I've already got Skype and it's installed on my Mac or PC. I'm not talking about that Skype. I'm talking about go to Skype.com on your Mac, on your PC, whatever, and install it. Open up their website, not the little app that makes phone calls to your mum and dad. I'm talking about open up their website, Skype.com, and then you can buy a number for yourself. You can pick England, Australia, America, wherever, and I don't know the actual pricing now, I can't remember, I think it's about $60 a year, I think, okay? And you imagine this now. In a couple of weeks' time, I'm going, as I said, to Japan, and I'm going, I've got 2,000 people I'm talking to. Then we're going to Italy and Sorrento, I've got 150. Then I'm going to England, it's 2,900. So it's a few people. But I look from the point of view. Do you think, for my reputation, it would look better to, oh, g'day, David, where are you from? I touch that. How can I contact you? I live in Pattaya, Thailand. They go, oh. Sometimes some people might like Patty the way we like Patty. I don't know why. <laughs> that was you, sir. I didn't laugh. Okay. People say to me, Patty, there's so many bars. When I live in Soy Sound with wife and kids, I don't even go to a bar and I don't even drink. But I look from the point of view. Say, for example, you go to my website and on the bottom it's got Thailand, Australia, England, and America. It's got four phone numbers. What do you think in your brain when you see four phone numbers? International. Sorry? International. International. What else do you think? I've got four what? Offices. This gentleman's all right. He's good. He answers all the questions. Thank you, sir. I get to England and they say to me, David, when you leave, how can I contact you? Good question. I say, listen, you can go to davidcavanersupport.com, blah, 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 or just go to my website, look at the English number, just write down my number, give us a buzz. They automatically assume that I've got an office in England. Now, I never ever liked people. I don't say I've got an office in England. Now, sometimes I get a phone call from somebody in England or America. Hello, Dave. That's my English accent. Hello, mate. How are you going? What are you doing? Well, it's like 3 o'clock in the morning, Thailand time. Oh, mate, I was sitting up waiting for your call. <laughs> you know, I didn't even know you were in England. I said, okay, fair enough. How can I help you? Please note, I didn't say yes I am, I said okay, fair enough, how can I help you? I've got more money I've made out of England, America and Australia by having phone numbers that people can call a local number and it gets redirected to me than if I gave out a Thailand, you know, True Mobile, DTAC, AIS number. Who agrees with that? It's handy to have that on your website. And put it on your website. But don't lie, don't say, oh, here's my office in England. No, you haven't got an office in England, just be your my board. And I just put um, contact detail, bang, 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 bang. What they assume is their business, but don't lie. Next thing, is that, is that handy for anyone here? Yes? And if you don't answer the call, which idiot did, <laughs> three o'clock in the bloody morning, you can make it divert to your Skype on your hand phone, your cell phone, your mobile phone, whatever you'd like to call it, or your laptop, desktop computer, your iPad, and tomorrow you'll get a recording. Hi, it's John from England, or it's me. You get what I mean? So I always make a recording, say, hi, it's David here. Listen, I can't attend to your call, but you know what I will do? I'm going to send you a free report tomorrow outlining such a, give us your name and email, and no charge to you, I'll call you back as soon as I can or something like that, you know what I mean? So next thing, I'd like to help you get started on the internet the right way. How many of you would like to, and again, no sales pitch, how many people of you would like to set up, now please listen to me, set up an internet business with no products, no websites, nothing in the bank, and you can still make yourself some money using other people's products that are legit, honest and upfront. How many people would like to do that? Yes or no? Okay, talk to Judith Ring, because I don't solicit people's names and cards and all that kind of stuff. Talk to them, and if you want, Judith, I'll even send you a flyer and a couple of things you can give to people, and I'll show them step by step how to do it. Okay? How many people would like to know where to go online to get some products you don't even own, and you can market and sell, and you make 75% commission? Half of you must be dead. If someone came up and said that to me, I'd be putting both hands up, not one. 
How many would like to make money with something online selling other people's products and you make 75% commission? You don't buy it, you don't store it, it's no, it's not MLM, it's not networking, nothing. You get my point? Talk to Judith Wren, I'm happy to send you a little checklist, you can give it out to any of the next meeting or whenever you want, no, no mindings, nothing like that, just for yourself. So okay, now what I'd like to do now, here's my name and my phone number if anyone wants to jot it down, if you ever need any help or anything like that. Um, I wanted to have a question and answer session, anything internet related. I run eight, 10 and 12 day live events, so I guarantee no matter what you ask me, you won't stump me. So okay, what I'd like now is any of you, even if you think it's a stupid question, it's not because you knew it, so how many of you would like to ask any questions whatsoever about anything internet related? Just put your hand up, and by all means, one of the gentlemen will give you a microphone. Any, yep, or someone. Just put your hand up, and by all means, I'll come around to you and I'll help you out while I'm here. Don't be shy. Who's the hand? Who's the hand? <laughs> Hello, oh, we've got one there. Oh, here, okay, the gentleman just here. Mike? He said, what was the question? Oh, we got a gentleman just over here. Gentleman in the song run. He's already getting into the song run already. He's going to be down the bar with his water pistols today. Just if you don't mind, stand up. Just give everyone your name so they know. Yeah, hi, it's Terry here. Give him a round of applause, folks. Yeah. Terry, good evening, Dave. <laughs> now, I was just wondering about that phone number you were saying. Would that work with the second authentication system? Which is a problem. Two factor, yes. Yeah, yes. When you go to another country, is that number changes? No, yes, it will, sir. So you could use that. So that one is over would be fantastic. 100%. Brilliant. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, yeah, that one there is a good question because the thing is, I mean, a lot of people when they travel, they worry, will it work, will it not work? Yes, sir, it will. Brilliant. Yes, definitely. Um, the gentleman just here. Yes, sir. Not a question, just a comment. I've had a Skype number for quite some time. It's uh, a place where I used to live. I, find, I don't need it for business, I'm not in this, I'm retired. Sure. But I find it handy for friends and relatives. <laughs> but what I really find it handy for is I use it for my banks and other places, so that they think I'm still living in Fort Worth. No, right. <laughs> and it is handy, I have it, uh, set to go to my uh, Skype account on my phone. And the nice thing about it, it cost me $60 a year. And most of my people, the family in the US, live even outside of where I live, they have uh, packages on their mobile phones that let them call numbers during certain hours free. So they call my number. It calls my Skype on my phone, which is the internet Skype. And there's no additional charges. It's the original $60, and I do find it comes in handy. Yeah. Now, give me a round of applause, folks. Yeah, that, that, what the gentleman, who understands what the gentleman was just saying here? Okay, because if you're from England, imagine this. Some people back home might be, what they call them in England? Cheap Charlies. Um, what they call them in Australia? You know, whatever. The bottom line is they only want to call you if it's a local number. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, haven't you heard of Facebook Messenger? Haven't you heard of Skype? Haven't you heard of Line? Haven't you? But anyway. If you register a number, as my wonderful friend over here just said, it can go straight through your cell phone, your mobile phone, it can go straight through your computer on your Skype, whatever. You're paying 60 bucks a year, and people will, like my mother, for example, doesn't like bringing me in Thailand because she says, oh, I don't want to walk down the shops and buy a calling card, etc., etc. So what she'll do, she rings my Australian Skype number, and that just goes straight through to me. So mum only pays like a little local call, even if she speaks to me for two hours. So who thinks it's beneficial to my mum or your friends, your relative? So if you've got, again, if you've got anything, you know my number, just jot it down if you have a need. Well, I'd love to help you. Uh, there's a gentleman over here. Yes, sir. Hello, Anthony Laporte. Um, one question, if you have a current number in the UK, US or wherever, can you transfer that specific number to Skype, the Skype service you're suggesting? Not that I know of. Not Thank that I know of. Thank you. Because what Skype does, is another company called Sonatel, S-O-N-E-T-E-L, there's another one if you look online, 
they buy a block or blocks, should I say, of numbers, and those numbers they own and they can re-rent out, etc. I don't know. I'll look into it. Give us a month later. Give us a couple of days. I'll look into it for you. I don't truly know. And that's another thing. If you ask me a question at the seminar, and then I'll always tell you I don't know, because otherwise you're a blatant liar. So I'll find you out and I'll let you know the truth to that, okay? Okay, who else got a question? Someone, has to be someone over here. Who's got one over here? Let me see. Oh, you this gentleman just here. It's quiet, Judas. They're getting ready for song crop, I think. Uh, yes, the, sir. The answer to your question is I have a US number, and with my phone, I transfer it to Skype, and that transfers to me here. Now, what you've done, you correct me if I'm wrong, you've forwarded the number to Skype. Uh, forwarded my US number to which, Skype, to which Skype. goes to your phone here. Yes, and I yeah. use that, I forward it on my phone. My yeah, so what phone. he's done is a re-diversion on his phone to Skype, which in turn, but you're still paying re-diversion charges in the US of A. No. Oh, you're not? It's through my phone. Oh, that's cool. I have a Samsung, you know, S7 transfer. I've done that for years. Okay, I'm also going to be anywhere if I'm in the Philippines or Cambodia or wherever. As long as I have internet, it works. Yeah, but hold on. That then is not your phone, that's the internet. Yeah. Well, Skype is internet. No, no, yeah, sure. But the thing is, what you're saying here, when you're. Okay, I get your point. Yeah, sorry. I, uh, I understand those points. But, but again, I'll find it exactly step by step what you're saying as well. Yes, uh, excuse me, sir. Good question, too. Because a lot of people do ask that stuff, definitely. Yes, sir. Yeah, they passed a law in the U.S. that uh, you can't transfer your number to any other carrier. I assume that probably includes Skype. You have to write, write to them, and you got to give them a few days, but it's the law that they cannot deny you transferring your phone number. Yeah, I have actually heard that, like you'd know a lot more than me, but I have heard that, sir. Uh, but what I say to people, imagine I don't have a number in the U.S., for example. I'll just go to Skype and I'll actually purchase a number. Well, technically, let's be real, I'm renting a number for 12 months because if I don't pay after that 12 month period of time, guess what happens, they take it off me. So what I would say, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you haven't already got a number, grab one through Skype and so then you have, don't have to worry about the rest of it if you have, different story. But again, there's so many laws passed in so many countries, I can't keep up with all them, so you'd know more than I would, sir, and there we go. So thank you for your comments and feedback. Uh, yes? Which area in the US were you from? Oh, cool. That's been a law for about 15 years oh. in the US. I transferred a, a, a phone 15 years ago because one carrier did not provide adequate uh, a tower for internet service and for reception in an area that I lived on Monday Bay Beach. So I, was, I did it 15 years ago. It's been a while. Wow. Uh, again, I don't know. Some of the Aussies in the UK, you, you can tell us about your areas too. Uh, yes, sir. Just here, sir. Yep. Thank you. David, thanks for the talk. Uh, and most of what you said today is way over my head. I'm retired, so you know I'm not going to start a business or anything. But I was really interested at the beginning of your talk, talking about reputation online, what people would find out about you. How do I specifically, if I go home today, yes. and I want to find out online through Google, uh, what do I Google online? Just my name? Okay, okay. I'll show you something here. Thank you. What was your name? Roger. Roger. Thank you, Roger. Here's the thing. Um, if you go to my Facebook wall, if you want to write this down, just go there, because I've actually written three things. Just go to facebook.com slash best coaching program. P-R-O-G-R-A-M. Best coaching program. Facebook.com slash best coaching program. About a week ago, I published a link there that if you click on it, I don't know if you know this, but if you can see, if you click on it, it'll take you to a page that I found that's got everything on it, okay? And I thought, why reinvent the wheel if someone else has re written it? Check this out. You open your phone, or you open your laptop, whether you've got an Android, or whether you've got an iPhone, like an iOS system, you click on it, it goes through to Google, oh my gosh. It told me I was at Retox, for 41 minutes at 12.38 p.m. on such and such. Too bad my beautiful wife was with me if she wasn't. I mean, luckily I said, sorry, my wife was with me because if she wasn't, she'd be wondering, hold on, where were you again, darling? Okay, 
I look from the point of view, then it tracks when you went into Facebook, everything. And I'm thinking, how the heck did it know about me? So if you go to facebook.com slash best coaching bro, I'll add you as a friend, um, and I'll, I'll redirect you, I can't remember the link, I'll redirect you, but you click on it and it tells you, you can track, I tracked it back to 2009, and I'm thinking, oh. And yet I help people with reputation management, and a lot of other things. But Google, Facebook, did you know when you say yes to the terms and conditions of Facebook, Google, etc., you're basically saying whatever they take to your theirs? Did you know that or not? Now, don't get me wrong. If I knew that beforehand, would I go back onto Facebook tomorrow? Yes, I would. Because Facebook can communicate worldwide. But I'm not saying or implying, but do you think Skype might record details? Do you think line mightn't? Do you think AIS or True or DTAC mightn't? I don't know. But if you go to my wall, I'll send you the link and I'll show you because I opened up and I said to Nisra, oh my gosh, I had a, well, they thought it was a seizure last year in July. And lucky my beautiful wife was there to chuck me in the back of a truck at Index or I might be here today. But it even told me where I was, what time I got to the hospital, and my wife turned my phone off. Off. How does that work? That's bloody scary. She turned the phone off. I understand that, but I don't have location set on my phone and it still knows where I am. So beat that one. I've got location set to off for every app. And it still told me my wife and I had bloody lunch at Retox in Soy Sien the other day. Now you tell me how that worked if my location is turned off. What's the purpose of the location turned off? I mean, oh my God. And I agree with you, sir, because a lot of times, and it's not a subject I like to admit because it's terrible, but when you look at people tracking down kids or stuff like that, they look at locations, times, etc., and photos, and so I turn mine deliberately off. And it still knew when I went to the hospital. And I went, holy shit, someone's watching us somewhere, brother. Uh, yes, there's some gentleman, has the hand up? Oh yes, just up in the corner. But who thinks that's pretty scary when you've got your location set, and I've got my phone switched off. And I'm thinking, do, 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 do. <laughs> I thought, bloody hell, there's gremlins in the system somewhere. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. My name is Donald. And I'd like to know, how did you get so smart on the internet? Mm. How did you learn? Did you learn on the internet, or did you go to school? Or how, how do you get all this information? Okay, thank you for asking. First of all, when I first started, and I won't get into that because we're probably running out of time anyway, but what happened, when I first started, if you can all remember, because none of you are as old as me, of course, there was a thing called BBS systems before the internet bulletin boards and all that. Anyway, I used to have a dot matrix printer. I sat on my lap and I printed stuff out with a yellow highlighter and I fell asleep and woke up in the morning there's more yellow highlighter on my bed than there was on my paper. And I was in Australia and I had some good success just marketing a couple of things online. And Brett McFall, who ran the World Internet Summit, rang me up and he says, that David Cameron? I said, yes, who's speaking? He said, my name's Brett McFall. I said, um, where are you from? He said, I run the World Internet Summit. And I said, how can I help you? I said, he said, I oh, would like you to speak as a guest speaker in Australia at the World Internet Summit. And the first thing I was thinking is, what the bloody hell am I going to talk about? Because I never got on stage before. And I'm confident on stage now because I do it every day for a job. But I look back then, you remember your first time you ever picked up a microphone, I'm like, I didn't know what to say. And so anyway, I learned off a lot of good quality speakers, because back then there were no seminars. And most of the people I learned off back then were from the United States, because that's where a lot of it really started, the marketing part of it. And I didn't have any money to go to seminars, so I had to teach myself. And I started hanging around with successful people, learning off them, and I am where I am today, because I've had successful people like them teaching me and helping me. But now, I run 8, 10, and 12 day of live events, and I go really well, but again, it's probably because, check this out, information is what most people learn. 
that information without implementation is useless. Most people learn a lot of stuff, but they end up getting stuff all because they don't implement or take action with the stuff they learn. Coming here today is great. Coming here listening to me might be good, it might be terrible, whichever perspective you look from. But if you don't go home and do anything, it's just another two hours of your life you've sat there with a free brick and listen to someone talk to you. Who agrees with that? So what I say, this gentleman, Don, you're probably very knowledgeable about what you know, sir. I'm wonderfully knowledgeable about what I know, but I'm terribly mad at the stuff I don't know. And that's most things, <laughs> except internet. But I look from the point of view, whatever you do in life, whatever you, you're looking at, take action and just implement what people have taught you that successful people. But anyway, listen, I know, Drew, this, we're pretty much out of time. There's my... Uh, excuse me, sir. Oh, not just one, one more on the left, please. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, we've got a beautiful lady up the back. Oh, this, well, maybe I should ask you later because this might take a while. Um, right in the U.S. right now, there's a big debate going on about how could or should the government regulate some of the, this data that's going, you know, the data company. Zuckerberg is going to testify before Congress yes. next um, week. So what are your thoughts on that? And there, I've heard one suggestion that if you go on any of these sites, that you would have the option to opt out of them collecting your data, but you would have to pay for that option. What are your thoughts? Okay, personal opinion, you shouldn't have to pay to opt out or opt into anything. Personal opinion. But I think America at the moment, the same as Australia England, they've got more problems than worrying about Zuckerberg. <laughs> I think they've got, they start from the, the fish things from the head down. You know? <laughs> so I think at the moment they've got more things to worry about than Zuckerberg. But I look from the point of view, it's like, it's like if I'm selling a product online to you and then the fine print says and you'll be charged $27 every month thereafter and you don't even read it because it's microscopic text. Well that to me is wrong. Who's ever copped something like that? Which I have. And it's bloody wrong. You shouldn't. And then you try to get out of it and you have to cancel your whole bloody credit card just to get them off your back. So I mean, my own personal thoughts, and I've met Zuckerberg before, he's, a nice, he's actually a nice guy. And Zuckerberg wasn't the one who caused the problems, if we look into the matter as came, you know. But anyway, I look from the point of view, you should be able to log in and out my own personal view of Facebook free of charge. You should be able to opt out free of charge. You should be able to, that's my own personal opinion. But there again, I've got a lot of opinions in my life that no one listens to. So I thank you for listening to me today. I appreciate the Patia City Expats Club for inviting me. Um, on behalf of the committee and Judith and Rena, thank you for having me. And I hopefully one day, uh, if you need anything, you can give me a buzz and I'll help you. So thank you very much for having me here today. Thank you. Can we just present you with this certificate for your speech today? I can't climb up there. You oh, okay. Okay. Especially as the knee brace is now undone itself. I'll take a photo of this lovely lady. It's really stylish, Judith. Thank you so much, Roger. You're supposed to say look in the mirror. No, it's, it's Roger I'm talking to. I don't need to say that to him. <laughs> Thanks very much, David. Thank you.